break my bones with words will never hurt me. That's not true, is it? No. In fact, some of the biggest wounded, the most painful wounds are inflicted by words. Yeah. And so I don't want to get all, this morning we're not going to get all bound up in formula, but I want you to understand that we, the next page, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm excited. It's Genesis 1.24, when God is making the earth, he said, let there be light, and then he, had, he, firm, he uh, created the firmament, and then he spoke to the earth. He said, he said uh, bring forth living creatures uh, according to his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth, according, each according to his kind, and it was so. So when he wanted animals and plants and trees and whatever else that is in the earth, he spoke to that firmament. He spoke to the earth because from the earth it came and the earth it will return. But then he scooped up a ball of dirt and he fashioned it in his image. And he didn't speak to the earth. He spoke to himself. Because what was going to be man would not come from the earth, but it would come from the heart of God. It would have an earth house. Okay. But, but so to connect him to the earth. But the person that Adam was, the person that you are, was eternally in the heart of God. And so he said, the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his breath, the no it bring to his nostrils the breath or spirit of life, and man became a living soul. And so that was our beginning. And so of all the next pages, so of all the creatures on the earth, God brought them by Adam. And, and here's what's funny, is that he brought every creature by Adam, and Adam gave it a name. And that is the name of that creature to this day. Okay. Whatever he called it, that was it. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about y'all. He must have been kind of running out of names with aardvark. Don't you think? <laughs> I'm just thinking, gee, what have we got left? Aardvark. There you go. But nonetheless, that name is important. Why is this important? Because of all the creatures that ran by Adam that day, the only species that can communicate with words was man. And in that one thing, it makes us like God. He formed this world with the words of his mouth, and he gave us that very same creative power. You don't think so? Watch who you're hanging around and see how it's affecting you. Okay. If you're around negative people, it'll make you depressed. If you're around cheerful people, it'll bring you up because their words carry something. And that's just in the natural. Right, okay? Right, yeah. You're with me so far? Yeah. Next page. What is a name? The word name in Hebrew and Greek literally means the character and authority. Okay. When you name something, you're assigning it character and authority. Okay. That's why when Jesus said, if you ask John 14, 14, he said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll give you that thing. Next page. I think I'm adding this up there too. In my name. What does that mean? I don't think it's the phrase in my name. I think that when I, listen to me carefully, when I know that I'm inside his character, when I know that I'm inside his authority, then when I'm asking, what I ask can be answered. Yeah. If I don't know that, and let me tell you folks, that is the battle, and you can say that it doesn't affect you, then you're weird. <laughs> Because I feel like every human being, every Christian person, their battle is to stay kingdom-minded. Their battle every day is to keep not what I see, not what I hear, not my senses from dictating what I know, but what the Word of God says. That's my battle every day. Right. Yep. That's right. But as long as I'm winning that fight, as long as I've caught my head and I'm inside His character, and I'm inside His authority, then I know my prayers are going to be answered because I'm asking by faith. Yeah. Right? Does that right. make sense? Okay, next page. You cannot operate in kingdom power without authority. This is why sin is so bad for us. Because sin drags our mind and drags our sense of self out of the kingdom and into the world. Right. Yes. Yep. It, may, it changes how you think you are and your relationship with God. Because it's not even so much I feel like that God puts a barrier. Because he said that nothing shall be able to separate us, Pastor Cameron. But we put the barrier. I see it all the time. I see people that they run into me outside of here. 
I hadn't seen them in a while, and they can't wait to get to the next aisle. Why? Because I reckon something about what I'm think they what they think I represent is starting to convict them, and so they don't want to be around that because we put ourselves at bay. When I know, I know it's like my dog does this. Pepe, I know when he's done something wrong, he comes walking in there, and he puts one paw on me like, man, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I, I, I don't know what was what I was thinking. But, yeah. But it's like, if he knows when something's wrong, Come on. don't we have a sense of knowing? And I'm, 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 I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that I bet every one of us battles this. Yes. Battle it. Yes. Not, not, not that we have infrequent stops, but this is a daily thing. I'm not good enough. I don't do enough. I, I, you know, I'm not whatever. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough education. I'm not pretty enough. Whatever it is, it just comes and bombards our minds. Why is it? Because it's wanting to knock you out of that authority. Amen. It wants to knock you out of the sense of kingdom that you are born and created to be. Next yes, page. That's good. Matthew 16, 17. I know Pastor Tim um, used this last week, but I'm not using the same thing. So Jesus answered and said to him, uh, this is after Peter had his great revelation. He said, Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Who do the people say that I am? Well, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, uh, you're blessed, Simon Bar-Jonah. That was his name. Simon, son of Jonah. That's what Bar-Jonah means. Okay. Jonah's your dad. Jonah's name means like a drunken stupor. Mm. So evidently he was a New Year's Eve baby, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Simon was named after Simeon, Israel's uh, second born, I believe. And Simeon's name means to hear, but he was characterized by being angry. It was said that when it came down to Joseph, that it was Simeon's idea to kill him. And finally, Israel told him about his sons. He said, you guys, you're cruel. You and Benjamin are cruel. And so this is the lineage. If you know, follow the life of Simon Peter, that you'll notice that he was always cutting swords, taking swords and cutting ears off and yeah. rushing in. He's bull rushing. He always had that passion. Yeah. And Jesus walked to, to him and said, I know that's what you were named. I know that this is how you were framed as a child. I know that these are the limits that were given you by your parents and by your grandparents. But I'm going to tell you something. That's not what I call you. I say that you are Peter or the rock. The steady, immovable rock. That's good. Now I'm here to tell you this morning that I don't care what they named you. And by the way, parents, if you're having children or grandchildren, take a little care into what you name them. <laughs> Come on. Frank Zappa named his kids Moon Unit and Dweezil. That's right. oh. Try living through that. That has therapy written all over it. <laughs> Think about, I'm just trying to tell you that no matter what, and it's, just, it's not just your given name. But how many of you were told something all your life? You're stupid. You're never going to amount to anything. That's right. Come on. Nobody will ever want you. You'll never succeed in anything. Anybody ever been framed by these kind of words? Or even, even worse, the lack of them. No father, no mother to really, pump, to really sow into your life and to, to, to build character into you. You just had to find it wherever you could get it. And the very idea that you're standing today is a testament to your strength and resilience. But you know what? James Dobson said this. He said, all hell can be breaking loose in the world. But if a kid's okay at home, he's okay. But a, but a kid could have everything life could give them, but if they don't have that at home, they're messed up. It's like Jacob and Esau. Esau stole Jacob's blessing. And when Esau got back, he wept and wept and wept. He said, can you not... At least bless me also. And I feel like we have a generation of kids that their father is an iPhone. That their mother is the internet. And that they get all of their self-worth from who likes their posts. 
And I'm saying that, and it may be us, and I'm just saying, you know what? There's got to be more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's given us a name. Yes. He's got a secret name for us written down in heaven. Well, I don't even know what that name is, but I know one name. He's given me a name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that I've been made in his image and in his likeness and in his character. And it doesn't matter who my mom and dad were. My father yes. is the king of the universe. And I am joint heir with his son. Yes. Your name, or rather your perception of who you are, determines the level of power and authority you're utilizing. May I say that again? Your name, or rather your perception of who you are, determines the level of power and authority you're utilizing. How many times, I can't tell you, that I go to pray for somebody, and here come the voices. You're not worthy to do this. You didn't read your Bible today. How do you have the right to, you know, whatever it is. It's just a constant barrage of things trying to make me not pray. Make me not witness. Make me not stand up for Jesus. Because it's trying to condemn me because he is what? The accuser. He didn't accuse the world. He accuses the brethren. Am I talking to the right crowd this morning? I don't know, maybe. Maybe it's just me, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm tired of fighting that fight. I wish I could say I'd be over tomorrow. It won't be, but I want to tell you something. I'd like to be uh, pumped up and ready today, right, to face this. Yeah. Right? Come on. Next page. In Ephesians 3.20, this is what got me started. It says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. All four of those words are the same basic word. What he's doing is he is multiplying what he's saying by four different times. It's kind of like he's saying it's big, big, big. I mean big. <laughs> Bigger than that. Come on. It's more, more, no more than that. No, more, more. He's trying to describe something that is indescribable. And he's saying that our God, see here's, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But Ethan, sometimes I pray and I've got this feeling in the back of my mind that God's not going to do it. He's just not going to do it. He can but he's just choosing not to. Because some religious person told me a long time ago that we, his ways are higher than ours and we don't know why we got leukemia. <laughs> As though God put leukemia on that person. As though somehow he needs sickness and disease to, to bring about his will in the earth. If he, if he uses those things, then why aren't any of them in heaven? Yeah. yeah. If he doesn't have them around him, he doesn't want it. Right. Come on. So what is it saying? I'm saying that there are times when you, uh, you, you it's like you've got to realize that the God that I'm serving, he knows what I need more than I want. He asked me to ask for it, but he, he doesn't want us to limit him by our low expectation. Okay. Because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, uh-oh, according to what? Uh oh, the power that's at work in us. So, what limits his ability? The power that's at work in me. What limits the power that works in me? My perception of who I am. Does that make any sense to anybody? I'm telling you, this is the deal. If you, if you have not spent time allowing the Holy Spirit to build you up and build you up as a, as a kingdom person and letting you know who you really are in Christ Jesus, and, and on the next page, there's only one way to get there. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing. And I know this sounds like work, but it's because it is. <laughs> I have to subject myself to the truth until the lie cannot be heard anymore. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. By the word of God, by the word of God, by the word of God. Christina told me she's got a, a Bible app that, that you just hear the word in your, in your headphones. You know, the technology's caught up with this. We just don't seem to have caught up with it. I can hear the word all the time if I want to. And if you'll realize this, that it's not even, I, I'm going to go one out here and I'm going to tell you that I believe that if you'll listen to it, even if you're not necessarily all the time paying attention to it, right, just let it. it's still getting in. Yes. 
I'm just saying in these days, it's, my spirit alarm is going off that his, his return is imminent and by the body of Christ, the bride of Christ needs to be on point. And we need to know who we are because we need the power to flow. Because we don't need to be dodging these, these attacks. We need to walk out fully armed, fully uh, you know, loaded so that we know who we are in Christ Jesus. And, and when a, a need arises, we can minister to that need out of faith and out of full assurance of knowing who we are. Yes. Yes. Next page. Whether you are Simon or Peter depends upon which name you answer to. You've heard me say this for a long time. It ain't what they call you, it's what you answer to. It's like that guy's at the game. I won't say what team he, he, he represents because it might make Pastor Cameron mad. But uh, there's this guy at a football game, and he went to the concession stand, and he got him a hot dog and a Coke, and he had some French fries, and he went to sit down, and, and, and by the time he got that thing unwound and, and, and getting ready to eat it, someone said, Steve! He ran it back up and he got up and he went and looked and looked and looked and he didn't see anybody. He sat back down and he started to unwind and wrap up again. Someone said, Steve! He put it all back up together and went back there and looked and didn't see anybody. Finally, he's going to sit down again the next time and someone said, Steve! He said, Dad, come in, my name ain't Steve! <laughs> it's not what they call you. It's what name you answer to. That's all right. See, I did that politically correct, okay? All right. <laughs> Say that with me. It's not what they call me. It's not what they call me. It's what I answer to. What I answer to. If they're they calling you by the wrong name, then just don't pick up. Yes. Don't bite. Yeah. If you're not a loser, if you're not a failure, and if you're not, you know, whatever that devil's trying to say, then don't pick up. Right. Because he's obviously talking to somebody else. He has no idea who he's dealing with. I told my kids one time when they were little, I said, if somebody asks you and says, who do you think you are? You need to say, how much time you got? I'll tell you who I am. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Right. Your whole life and everyone in it may be calling you a failure or unwanted of no value, but Jesus is saying something entirely different. If you listen to the bad, you will assume that identity. If you listen to Jesus, you'll be like him. Yeah. It's that simple, and it's that vital, and don't think you're going to outgrow this, right? because you don't. Right. Because we can quote scripture all day long and be carnal, <laughs> and not in the kingdom, right. not under the anointing. We're just doing it out of memory, not out of Revelation. Next page. Proverbs 23, 7 says this, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Whatever you think about yourself, that is the reality that you live out of. And I'm telling you, and, and traditional religion has taught that we're just old sinners saved by grace. We're not. Old, we're either old sinners or we're saved by grace. We're not both. If you're an old sinner, you need to get born again. If you're born again, you are no longer a sinner. You may commit sin, but that doesn't mean you're a sinner. Come on. That makes sense? Yes. It's like putting a tear on a, on a pig doesn't make her a princess. Right, right. But throwing mud on a princess don't make her a pig either. Come on. Right? Yeah. Next page. Matthew 12, 35. Why am I harping on all this? I'm going to let you out here early today. This is a good man out of the good treasure. What is the good treasure? What am I, whatever I'm seeking first, whatever I'm placing in my heart is my good treasure. If it's the word of God, then there's a treasure that I will out of bring forth good things. Okay. Right. If I'm an evil man, out of my evil treasure. And by the way, evil is described by, by, by Jesus. is not necessary. It's kind of like he said that my love for my children is evil in compared to his love. Right. It said it's so far down the scale compared to him, it might as well be the opposite. And so what I'm saying is, you know, man, I say, well, I'm not an evil person. I'm not saying you're an evil person, but I'm saying if your tank is dry, yeah. there's only two choices. You either got good or you got whatever's left. Thank you. <laughs> got one amen back there. Come on, baby. <laughs> but I say to you, that for every idle word, what does idle word mean? It means it's unemployed, it's unassigned. It's just stuff coming out of your mouth. 
And boy, we do that to, oh. Too much. Too much. He said, we're out to give an account of that in the, in the day of judgment. Why? Because God takes great stock in his word. And in words, we're the only creatures that can speak and make language. Dolphins can ee, but they can't make a sentence. Right. They can't talk. We have been given the creative power to talk. And God says, let me tell you how important those words are. By your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. And I think that not just in the last day, Eddie, I think that every day of my life, I'm justified by my words yeah. and I'm condemned by my words. Right, you're right. Whatever I say about myself, what I, and I don't just that, if I still got you for five minutes. See, it's not so much that you're even saying bad things about yourself or you're saying the negative. You pick it out of a conversation. You find the negative in the world, and that's what you talk about. Well, you're creating that atmosphere. Oh. That is what you're living in right. is your criticism of what's going on in the world. And you know what? Even though you may think you're God's son and, and anointed and filled and all that, you're creating an environment of that poison yeah. that's stealing your anointing. You're right. Next page. In James chapter 3, the half-brother of Jesus is writing. He said, if anyone does not stumble in what word? Let's try, let's, let's try that again. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man, able to also bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue. The tongue is described and, and compared to being the bit in a horse's mouth or the rudder of a ship. And don't make, make no mistake. Your tongue is steering you into your life. Wherever, whatever you're saying about yourself, whatever you're saying about where you're going, whatever you're saying about things around you, that is the direction you're going. Not what you think you're going into, but what you are saying you're going uh, into. Yes. You're right. And I don't know how y'all are, but I'm ready to clean my mouth up. Right? I'm just ready to get right and do it right. And, and you know, like, I, I know people in, in, that will not have that conversation. They'll hang up the phone on you if you want to have that conversation. They don't talk about that. They won't do it. Because you know what? It's too damaging and it's too dangerous. And we've been playing with fire long enough. It's time for us to realize the severity of this and realize, okay, you know what? How I think about myself is of utmost importance. Because if I let go and if I start entertaining those thoughts, you know, those negative thoughts are like firing a bullet inside your head and it just ricochets in there. You can't have it. We gotta take those things captive, and we gotta replace them. Well, I, I, I'll, you know, and, and I can hear it right now in the spirit. P people are so afraid of making a mistake. You're already making a mistake mm -hmm. by not doing it. Yeah. Just give it a shot. If you fall down, get back up. You're right. Because, like it says, if you fall down seven, you get up seven. <laughs> You're already up. <laughs> Next page. Job 22 is my last scripture. <coughs> Job 22 and 28, my appreciation of Job has grown over the years. To have gone through what he went through and never cursed God and never listened to the lie. Mm -hmm. He had some pretty sharp things to say. And when he entered into forgiveness, and forgave his wicked friends. That used to not be a thing, but you know, those pile up too, don't they, over the years? Yeah. God was able to bring back everything he had lost. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I don't know what your situation is, but I'm going to tell you that the day has come for you to declare a thing. For you to boldly declare what you want, for you to boldly declare who God is and who he is to you, for you to get a little grit in your crawl and not just let the devil run roughshod through your home, through your children and grandchildren, through your, through your careers, through your bodies. Right. 
Are we taking God's word like medicine? I don't think I am. I think I'm taking medicine like medicine. Because some guy in a lab coat told me that helped me. But when I was a younger man, I knew that I needed to say the word of God over my body for it to be healed. Is anybody with me today? Yes. Come on. Just because I'm 61 doesn't mean now that suddenly the word is of no effect. It's just that my mind is not of effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand up right now before we take communion. And we're going to declare some things and then we're going to take communion and seal it. Are you with me? Yeah. Stand up with me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want you to raise your hands and I'm going to declare it over you. And you need to say it over yourself. Lord, I thank you that I am your, I've been made in your image. I thank you that I belong to you. I'm a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I'm saved, healed, delivered, and protected because I have trusted in the name that's above every other name. I curse depression. I curse discouragement. I curse uh, failure. I curse low self-esteem. I thank you right now, Lord God, that you're rising up big inside of me. And I will not entertain these negative thoughts or these things that attack my soul any longer. It's too important. So I decree I'm made in your image. I decree, Lord God, that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. I will not accept failure because you have made me a success. And I decree it. I declare it. I stand on it.